Zoe. It is the middle of March, but we're not in spring yet. And today is time for a garden tour. I'd almost skip it because I really have been doing more work on the inside and taking care of tens of thousands of hummingbirds. But you know what? I'm gonna do just a walkthrough and tell you what is coming, like new plants I've been either planting from seeds or starting to buy, and think about how I'm gonna be more selective on the deck when I really get into it. It's setting, I don't know if the fruit's going to set completely, but. And let me tell you, I will be, because I'm gonna be growing a lot of lettuce. Even the celery that comes up everywhere, if it's not the green one, it's going up, because that's what I want. And I'm getting a lot more flowers here, and I think it is starting to rain again. We have been getting rain, and they told us no rain constantly, but rain is good. What still isn't good for us is we can drop into the 40s at night. So being that it's not spring, and I haven't done a lot, I'm gonna walk through my garden and, well, do you wanna go down and take a look at Gary's garden? Because I'm sure he's got something new down there. And I think by April 1st, not April Fool's, Things are really going to change, and that's when we're going to start to see the transition into spring. So let's go take a walk through the garden. So now I am in the driveway in my garden. Green celery, green celery. I'm going to work on that. We're going to just walk through because what you might see are some things got moved. In other words, I'm cleaning up. We're starting to get rid of all the brown stuff. Maybe there's still some things around, but we're really clearing out things that are long gone, but not throwing it away. Oh no, we're gonna talk a lot about composting. And here in Southern California where we are, we are still 40, about 49, 48 degrees at night, which is still a little cool for some plants, but not all. I am starting seeds, cabbages, lettuce, broccoli, a lot of stuff. Look at this, giant mustard growing where? in rocks. Can you believe it? I'm using it. Cleared out a lot of the popolo that was here. We had a lot of different things like that and it's gone. It's seeds. I should collect a little bit of the seeds knowing that these are fresh seeds. See how they look? Kind of like uh, marigold seeds in a way. Oh, I'm going to put it up here and forget I put it in there. No, I want to gut all this and I think I'm going to go with lettuce because it's off the ground. The rabbits can't get it and I can make tops for it and keep all the insects out. What I wanna do this year is do a little bit more vlogging in between where I can tell you what I'm doing because there's certain things that we can cover. We don't need pollinators. We don't even want the pollinators. And there are certain things, of course, that we do. Look at this. And you know what? Sow thistle, I use that. And then this is Swiss chard. So I'm gonna compost all this in. See, green celery, I love my green celery. If I see red and it starts to throw seed, I am taking it out. But we're gonna talk about different things on gardening. It's not on the cheap. What it is, it's gardening the way nature has been gardening for millions of years. And why not do it that way and save money? Now, if you wanna spend money, of course you spend money. And that's what I wanna talk about. Things that we can do that are not only cheap, but I personally think better. Let's go into the front yard and see what's going on there. Oh, red celery. That's a no-no. I just don't like the taste. It's kind of a hot taste, but it's not even hot. And this is the one that I really adore. So why not grow what I like? All right, now to the front yard. And here is the front yard. I haven't started planting in here yet. I'm starting to think I may go with tomatoes in here, but the tomatoes I like, like sun golds. I just bought those. I'm going to propagate those and maybe some flowers because of the trees. The pine trees, as you can see, wow, they really shade the front yard. So we'll do something with that or I'll, I'll get to that later. That's where our pipe broke. We're just gonna leave it covered like this. The hole is open, but it's completely covered. And let me cut in here and tell you, we did have a patchwork done on it. So it isn't leaking at all right now. It was a very tiny hole, but we're gonna keep it open if the patch starts to leak or when we're ready, we might have the whole entire pipe replaced because it's gonna be really expensive to do and maybe we'll do it later. And if it, maybe we won't have to do it for years. I think everything is great. Oh, there I've been composting, cleaning up everything that's brown. If I don't put it in the tote itself, I'm gonna put it in there and load things in there. Look at the brassicas. Look how beautiful. And let me tell you something. We are eating this. This is fabulous. Now this is also brassicas. And doesn't it look like broccoli? I treat this like broccoli. 
or it goes into my green drinks. I love listening to the birds. Then I've got flat leaf parsley. Sometimes I think it's not really. I think it might be a cross between parsley and celery. I don't like the taste of it. For now, I'll leave it, but I'm gonna change out. Now, I wanna grow what I like. Now, we've kind of really used up everything here, but I'm gonna redo this with you because this is an important table that I grow on, and I love it. Look at this, chamomile, is that amazing? Red celery, which will go. Everything here went to seed. This went to seed. This is my purple bok choy. Eventually, it just went to seed, and I thought, let's let it do its thing. My beets are coming up. So I'm gonna leave the beets covered. I don't want anything to eat that. Let's go through here. Again, flat leaf parsley, and look, geraniums coming up in the wood chips. Remember the front yard here? Let me step back. This is a parking lot. This is basically where we were supposed to park, and it's only a blacktop. So it's only growing and breaking down wood chips. Let's keep going, because I really want to get down to Gary's garden, since my garden hasn't really changed, but I think two more weeks, is gonna be the big change, look at this. These are growing inside the cement blocks. And look how big and massive they got. I love it because I don't have to do anything. And this is great food for small birds. This is just grass seed. All right, let's swing around here. I don't really wanna keep swinging you. This is my ginger I'm taking out and there's tons of ginger. So I'm just starting to work on this. I think I'll have this done in another day or two. As you can see, I'm pulling out the soil. I've been sifting some soil from the ground and bringing it here. A lot of this is actually compost that came out of wood chips and leaf matter and just kind of sifted it down. And then here, I let's move this so I can explain what I've done. All this is done. So the turmeric, turmeric hair has been picked. This is a bucket full. And then there's more here. And I've been putting back like one or two pieces in each one. I still have to get to this. So I know I've done this side. I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to decide how far I'm going to go with turmeric and ginger. I think the ginger would benefit some more sun. Again, the pine trees are really taking from that. The turmeric, though, I have found I can grow in shade, so it doesn't really matter. It gets plenty of sun in the morning, as you can see. So this will be really good. So I've been really working my little tail off here and I've got to either decide what I'm going to grow. We've been eating so much of this. Look at this. This big piece has already been broken into by me. We've been breaking pieces off. And this came off of literally one piece. So you plant one, stick it in there, you go watch my other videos, and you'll end up with a big hand by the end of the year. And on top of that, let me just leave that there, it goes all the way down. Watch the video because turmeric does not grow like ginger. Each one grows differently. And when you know that, you're gonna to grow tons of it. So I might make a ginger table up there. I might spot it around as well, and I might even bring some of it in the bird garden. All right, let's walk into the bird garden. Look at my compost coming out of the kitchen. This I uncovered because I made a mistake. I made a beautiful cover, but I didn't cover it in the beginning. So I ended up protecting, look at that, more mustard. I protected all the insects that got in there and it ate up the lettuce. So I'm just leaving it open until I get back to this take everything out, start some more lettuce, but I don't know if I'll be able to do actually lettuce here because this is south facing and it just gets so much sun that it will be too warm for that. So I'll find something else, maybe walking onions, they do good. Let's just walk through, do you know it rained again yesterday? Constantly raining. They said it wasn't going to, I trusted them and they goofed. We got rain, a lot of rain. Anyways, rain is good. It's the cold. Let's keep walking. So here is the same mold that you probably saw two weeks ago. But you know, you probably can look at it and say, wait a minute, that plant got bigger. This is more, uh, you know, has more flowers. Look at all the birds waiting for me to leave. So this is my bird garden. Though it is for the birds, I'm gonna change that up too. It's also food. I'm gonna say right now with the amount of flowers I added in, I could have told you what, a couple years ago, oh, it's like 99% food for us. Well, now we're gonna to have to tip the scale the other way a little bit because now it's actually 75% food for us because I am planting different types of uh, flowers for the birds. I've got different uh, salvias in here. I've got the hummingbirds lunch, which is the kufia. I've got 
emu plants, all different kinds. I've got yellow, I've got orange, I've got pink, I've got red, everything growing. So I have gone more into flowers. I've got the blanket flower that's growing there, and I didn't plant that. Nature did. The bird came and pooped in that pot last summer, and it just took off growing. I've got geraniums. I do have the dragon fruit, and I want to get more dragon fruit through here. But I've got lemon verbena, all kinds of different colored, and walking onions, and mint, everything. Look, a cutting that came off in the hummingbird's feed here by the door, so I can sit on my chair there and watch the hummingbirds come. It's so beautiful in here. So I want to clean this up, including hip, this. I guarantee you, in two weeks, this will not look like this. I stepped back yesterday and came up with ideas and said, this is changing. So you will see a change. Oh, the birds are taking a bath down there. I don't think I can zoom in. Let me see. He saw me. No, no, hold on. I'm going to zoom in for a minute. He left. I've got water. No, he is in there. See? And my angel? Can you see that? I think. Oh, it's a white crown. They just take baths all day and just do their thing. I love it. Okay, let's keep going. If I don't keep going, the truth is, I could stay here all day watching the birds, and that's what I love doing. Maybe I should vlog from here. What do you think? Should I sit and talk to you either live or just vlog periodically to kind of give you ideas on how to save money and do it really better? Here come the goldfinches. Oh, they have tons of babies here. But what I'm doing here is concentrating on keeping the doves out of certain bowls. Somebody said last month, oh, you have something against doves? No, I absolutely love them. But they come in by the dozens and they swallow food. And when they swallow, where a bird comes and chews it and bites it and takes the shell off, doves do not. So they can come in and they can eat a thousand seeds in less than a minute where the birds take their time because they have to crack the seeds open. And so I have to slow the doves down. Okay, so all the little birds have come in and eaten that. The only ones that can get in there are small birds. They go through the wire, go see the video. It's worked, it's even kept the squirrels out. So that has worked really good. And then the doves can go to the open bowls. I also have to fill the fountains up. They are the ones that empty it. They come in and take such baths and splash the water everywhere that they'll empty that in a matter of hours sometimes. All right, let's keep walking. So I do like the doves, but I want to make sure that when the spice finches or the white crowns or the house finches come in, that they have food because in about, well, I was gonna say in about a month they'll have babies, but they're always ready sitting on nests. So they may have babies already. Back here, I'm so excited. Look at the size of the tree collar. Remember I put that in with the auger? Just drilled a hole and dropped it in, covered it back and watered it. They did really good because they're up against pots. We talk about this all the time. And then some of those are just starting. I think the ground is a little harder there. They get a little more shade and protection from the fig tree, so these took off better. But I'm going to get more in there, and I want to get more dragon fruit. I had a little piece of dragon fruit in there, like a seedling, and, well, it got watered in. So we're going to just get more in there. Look at this, a hybrid. Is this not beautiful? Can't tell you what it is because I don't know, but uh, let's just drop the leaf in here. Everything goes back, but look how beautiful this. Now, if I want to concentrate on the leaves, I would take all the flowers off. I'm gonna leave the flowers, let me back up for right now for the bees, even though we don't have too many bees right now because we're so cold, but also I can take them off if there's no insects on there, you know, load it, wash them really good and make a green drink out of it. So I might do that, but it's some sort of hybrid and it is purple. So it came from something, could be two or three way, depending on how the seeds were pollinated. Here's another purple one. This could be a tree collard. Isn't that gorgeous? Look how beautiful that is. This is potatoes. These are the purple ones, so we'll get to that later. All I do is every three months, I come in here, as soon as it starts to die back, dump it out, take my potatoes out, put one or two back that I like, and the cycle of life continues to grow. Do I do anything to it? Yes, what I do is I grab some leaves as I'm redoing it. You can watch the videos on that. The leaves go back in there with the soil. It rejuvenates the soil and everything keeps growing. All right, so let's see what's going on here. This one in this tote finally died. Though it's still alive, like this I can cut off right away. Let me back up. And that will grow. But the rest of it, no, it's that there's no holes on the bottom of that tote. I mean, for the roots to get out. There are holes, don't kid yourself. Of course, everything has to drain. 
but they're not getting the roots in like I'll show you the papayas in a minute. So because of that, I think it finally just fizzled out and that's okay. I actually don't want it there. I would like to get all my tree collards in the back, a little bit more uniform so I can get to these old dog kennels and get them planted up with tomatoes and different things in here and peppers and maybe some more beautiful brassicas. And then I can get to the food in the front and the foliage in the back for the birds to hide in as well as food for me. So we can keep going and then we've got mint growing all over the ground. And let's see what's through here. This is another one. This is also part of it. It broke and now it's come up. See how it's bent? You can see it down there. It's bent and it's coming up this way. I'll probably get this one out too eventually. And this, I told Gary, let's retire this. I don't want the birds to feed here. I'm gonna move that to the other side of the yard. I believe I'm gonna to get totes in here unless I make a raised bed. And I did tell you I was gonna take that tomato trough, the big metal one, that you had tomatoes in last year and I wanna move that here. But I think I also wanna get some totes on chairs. We have baby bunnies running through here. I saw it the other day. I don't know if Notch, the one that's got the ear, with the little notch out of it. I don't know if Notch is now a boy or a girl. And somebody had babies in here, so I've seen them running around. Little tiny ones, a little cottontail on the back. It's so cute. Aren't these gorgeous? And let me tell you something, makes the greatest coleslaw. There's my pride and joy. I lost the original plant, but it, I put a piece in there and it's growing everywhere. So that's good. And there's one here too. Look how big these leaves are. I don't know if I can get back here so easy. Let me see. And all these pots on the bottom, these are regular floral pots, but the bottom's been cut out. So the water goes directly to the roots. From there, they leave. Remember, if the roots don't get water and you're watering your plant and it's in the ground and the water leaves like a river, underground river, they may not get the water they need. So I know they get the water, but this one did die back. I have noticed that some of the old purple tree color died back. So I'll take some cuttings off of that one and start over, but look at this. Isn't that beautiful? So you don't have to do anything. I can just take that out, compost all that in a tote, and stick a new piece in there, and it will grow. Let's keep going. There's Gary's room. He's got seedlings start taking off now in there, and all his stuff is going on. He's got dragon fruit growing and everything. So we'll step into that another time. More mint here. This one's kind of getting shabby, so I'm going to have to get more cuttings off of this beautiful purple kale, but it's still, it's still hanging in there. This has got turmeric that grew. This is all turmeric leaves. I don't think I'm even gonna take it out. I'm gonna see if it comes back on its own. And this is just from bird seed, probably millet. Listen to all the birds. This is my little area where I can work. Oh, I was gonna show you the papayas. We'll get more into all the papayas soon. See, now this one's got big holes and this can set its roots out into the ground, but this got hit with the cold. It made it all winter. And then we got back into the 40s again, and I think it was just too much for the plant. I'm not gonna try to cater to it because it really is in the middle. And I would like to have papayas growing somewhere else, not quite here, we gotta walk around it. But we'll see what happens, and I still have papayas on it. So will they make it? You know, maybe a couple of these plants will make it, and that might be better, but I'm not gonna do anything. Whatever happens to it, happens to it. And then I can get the tote out if the whole thing dies back because they lost the ones that were outside. Okay, let's go walk over here. I'll tell you what totes are good for. If you've got extra soil that you wanna plant in and stuff, you can store it in totes. And it's really, really nice. Rainbow Garden looks shabby. Shabby chic, no, no, no. Look at this. This shows me that it's time to grow. This tomato plant just came up in there and it is taking off. Oh, look, I've got a geranium that's gonna throw flowers. So I'm, I might stake it up if I'm gonna keep it, but that shows me that this is time to grow because I didn't plant this. The potato mint, the soil's dropped all the way down. I'm gonna get that out and it's going in buckets. It's too hard to surface that way. I have to dig it out in a bucket like my potatoes. You tip it and you're on your way. These are getting close to uncovering. Look at this. They're eaten by probably roly polies because there's not enough in there for the roly polies to eat. But you see they're flowering? Just some peppers I stuck out here at the end of fall to winter and it wintered okay. This one too is being eaten. I just have to figure out what is eating it, but I do think it's roly polies. I haven't seen any worms. So I'll have to get more in here and really look for them or put a trap for the roly polies. Go get an orange or a grapefruit. 
gut it, turn it upside down, they'll go underneath and start getting them out. Peppers too from the cold, still alive though, should make a good comeback. And like I said, nothing new here, nothing. When I come out here, I will go through, I'm gonna leave this because this is doing fabulous, there's more flowers. We keep picking and it keeps growing. And this is Pepino. And this one came off of this old plant. So I wanna get more off of this plant and then I've got red vein sorrel, I've got onions growing in here, regular onions, regular onions over there. I've got garlic around here somewhere, walking onions. This is all geranium cuttings on the bottom. That's got milkweed growing in a bucket, that's good. I might actually put, put that in a pot. I've got some neighbors that want it. Uh, this pepper looks like it wants to make a comeback, so a good cleaning. Clean this up, it's still growing a pepper. Just weeds, just stuff, this is just, uh, native weeds growing in there. And then there's, this is a, another hummingbird lunch. Isn't that beautiful? And then more cuttings from geraniums. And there is shark fin melon. And you know what? Let's go this way. I'm using it. I'm finally cooking with it and I appreciate it, which is really different. Now the dog run, I've got plans, but again, I'm a wimp when it comes to the cold. I love the heat. I can work out in hundred degrees. But when it comes to anything under 50, I am too cold. So I've been leaving that, but I am going to get to that. I absolutely love that. All right, let's go keep walking. You've already seen this. We've made a full circle. Now keep something in mind as we walk through, because nothing's been done here. So whatever's growing has just been growing all through the winter. I'm the only one that takes care of all this. I have no one, though I would love to kidnap some of my neighbors and teach them the garden and get them over here. And so I do get slow. So I get a lot of plans and sometimes I can't get to everything. But I do have plans for this whole area. I'm actually thinking of taking out that entire geranium. It's too big, it's not doing me any good and there's a tote under there. So we'll see my pepper plant wintered. This is a tomato that came up on the ground. Look at that. I don't know if you remember it had died. Look at that, it's still throwing peppers. Covered it with tulle on the base to keep it a little warmer, like a blanket, and it worked. They had no leaves on it. It was dead. I thought it was a goner. So that is a, an Italian pepper, I believe. See the clouds? Now it got dark. They're calling for rain again today. We've got a Cooper Hawk nest up there. We're waiting for the babies to hatch. So far, no. So let's see what else is going on. Oh, we got things blowing around. We've had some massive winds. But nothing new in the ponds. I haven't really you know, done a whole lot because we've got raccoons. So I'm gonna leave that. Let's walk over here. I have not gotten to the turmeric here, but I do plan on getting to that. And that has been growing all last year under the shade. It'd be interesting to see how much turmeric really grew in there. If it didn't grow that good, then I might have to move it a little bit more into the sun. And look at my nectarine. We had 50 nectarines. This is a seedling out of my you know, yard. Just Gary dug it up and brought it over here. Is that not beautiful? Nothing is more beautiful than seeing pink blossoms before spring, knowing that spring is on the way. Beautiful tree, I love it. The idea that we just moved it here. I've got to clean that toad up. And then I've got my apple trees. I don't know if they'll ever do anything. I grew these from seed and I didn't have the heart to compost them. And I put them in the ground and they grow beautiful, but will they ever grow apples? Well, we'll see. It's not hurting anything, so I'm gonna leave it. And then I have a pomegranate there, along with many other pomegranates that I grew in my compost from eating a, you know, a pomegranate and then it grew. And then I plucked them out and grew them and they grow really good from seed. Within two years, I had pomegranates. My chair garden needs a good cleaning. I'm gonna redo the irrigation tubing, get it in there a little neater, except for that one's doing really good go through and maybe get the geraniums out. All these, where the water runs out, is to catch the water in floral pots so I can grow more geraniums and move them anywhere I want. So it's kind of a double duty on that instead of it having it hit the ground. I used to collect the water, then you have to make sure you go through. There might be mosquitoes, so it works out much better that way. This way I'm growing a plant without any effort. So this, I'm, I love this. This is what now? Is this four years old? and I haven't replaced anything, though I may replace one tote because see the canyon? It comes through and you can see the breeze right now. See how it's blowing on that? So that gets cold and hot air blowing on it. And yes, if I would have put flags around it earlier, I could have saved the tote, but I think it's 
the soil's too low and the constant wind, cold and hot. So that took the beating where the other ones are protected and they did really, really well. Then I added some flags on for color, just clipped them on with a binder clip. And you can add color into your garden with garden flags. Here I told you flowers, though I do plan on putting flowers in here. I don't want to take out my shark fin melon. I want it to grow now. Now that I'm using this for everyday cooking, can you imagine it took me how many years to decide, oh, maybe I can use it. I love this stuff now. So I'm going to get some flower seeds in here, but I don't want any of the shark fin melon disturbed because it's, it comes back from its roots. Unlike zucchini and pumpkins and squash, they die back completely and you have to reseed. You don't have to reseed shark fin melon. Any place the roots have touched, it will regrow. So if you like this, you know, a shark fin melon, fig leaf gourd, whatever you want to call it, if you like it, it's the perfect thing to grow. If you don't like it, it'll be a nightmare to get rid of. And I do want to repaint, not repaint, but touch this up with colors. Okay, let's, you know what? I'm just gonna leisurely walk down to Gary's garden. Oh, wow, I didn't know this one blew over too. We had a lot of wind and my solar panels flew down. Boy, did we have wind the other day, really bad. And there's all the flowers that Gary put in there, the aloe vera, we've got uh, cannas, different things. All right, let's take a walk down here. And no bees ever visited his beehive he put there. All right, let's go down to Gary's garden. Oh my, I don't even know where those chairs came from. Big leaf gourd, shark fin melon, it's the same plant. It's growing all through here, so that is really good. All right, let's keep going. Okay, something broke. Oh, this chair broke. Okay, so now I see with the wind, I had some chairs up there and they blew off the side of the hill. I didn't know, Gary didn't tell me. He may not have walked this way. It's not a complete loss. These are chairs we find in the trash. What I'll do is I'll put a toad on there and make it just for, see this one? As long as the legs didn't break, let's take a look. Obviously he hasn't driven down here. Yeah, you know what? I can put a toad on there and make one of those compost systems where it brings, uh, not only am I making compost from kitchen scraps and leaves, but it cr creates insects for the insect eaters. So they'll have nests everywhere and have plenty of babies. When I mean, this one looks like it did not break. So that one just tumbled down from the hillside. Wow, at least the tree didn't. That's a good thing. I'm not gonna worry about a chair. Oh, but look, an old nest. Looks like an old nest maybe. And sometimes after winds, you do find them. Okay, things blew around here. See, here's a limb that came off from something. Like I said, it's been really windy. I am not sure yet what I'm going to do here because there's no water here yet. So as long as there's no water, it means I have to hand carry in water. Because what I have to do is fill up a bucket there from my garden. We have a hose there. Then hand carry it over here. So I don't know. You know what I could do? Oh, I didn't think about it. Thank you for joining me on this. How about a succulent garden with, dotted with peppers? Now, why peppers? Because they don't need a lot of water. And I can have succulents growing on top that will hold the water possibly for the peppers. And I can have uh, just some pepper plants growing. I might do that. Remind me if I forget, because that might be a good thing to go, especially succulents. I actually like succulents. I used to grow a lot of them years ago. Okay, let's keep going. It's a good thing to walk through here because we can look for damage from the wind. Oh, things blew off the deck again. Had that a month ago and then we went through it again. This time I took everything down so I didn't have as much damage there, but I forgot about the chairs. More limbs came down as we can see. 
ravens playing with the wind in the air. We still had wind today. This is a gully with all the rain. I'm sure these plants are very happy. Okay, and we're approaching Gary's garden. You know what this is? This is stinging nettles, let me see. Right there, and Gary brings that in in the morning. He makes the tea out of it. I have to be careful, I'm allergic to it. My mouth swelled up from just putting a little bit in my mouth wrong. You have to treat it or do something. Gary has no allergy to it at all. He probably got immune to it by using it so much. He could just break it off and eat it. Don't do that because you could have your throat and your mouth swell up. So be very careful with it, but it's supposed to be really good for inflammation and stuff. So he loves it. Isn't that beautiful? Look at all the plants down here. From all the rain, it's like its own forest. We have to be careful because we have, um, oh, not poison ivy, but poison oak down there. Somebody lost the balloon. Um, oh, one of those mylar balloons must have landed down there. So we've got um, loquats, comquats. No, comquats are the orange one. We got loquats there. It's full. Oh, that's going to be fun. You have to climb down there and get it. But see that? This tree right here? That's a loquat tree. They're so good. Okay, and then this is with the nightmare trees that Gary planted. And he was sorry he did because this is the Brazilian peppers. And he thought it would give a good windbreak from the canyon, which it did. But they also have terrible roots, and their roots will go into Gary's garden. Gary's in here. And there's my garden. See the circle? Literally a hiking trail. Look at that. I mean, it's beautiful. God, when I was a kid, I would have loved this. I'd be down here just living in the garden all the time. But it's a full hiking trail from the house all the way down. We just hiked it. And now we're here. Can we come visit? Yes, you can. Do you have your mic on? Yes, I do. Oh, good. I gave him a mic and told him, if you see me coming, turn it on. Good. Because this way I don't have to chase you around and stick the camera in your face. What in the world are you doing here? I'm putting wire down to exclude gophers out of my garden. This looks like rock. And that's the soil under my garden. Oh my goodness. It doesn't it look great? It's decomposed shale. It's turned into clay. That is horrible. So what do you want to show us in here? Because I haven't been down here for a while and you didn't even tell me all those chairs blew down and broke, one of them broke to pieces. That I didn't notice. I didn't think you did. You know what though? The, don't throw it out because the leg didn't break. The legs are good so I'm going to use it for putting a tote down for the okay. birds. All right, so let's why don't you take me through? Yeah, I just want to make sure that rabbits don't get in, so I'll shut the gate. So what started to grow here, my grapevines are starting to grow back. These ones are just starting to bud a bit. The ones further down have got leaves on them already. And my chayote is producing fruit. So it's been flowering and it's setting, I don't know if the fruit's going to set completely, but it's got small fruit on it. Some of the fruit. Where's the fruit? I can't see. Oh my goodness, that tiny little there. thing. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because that's and early. Yeah, there's cold. a lot of them set along here. Some of them have been dropping off, so I don't know if they're going to hold or not. So I've got a couple here that have fallen off already, so I don't know if they've got fertile, fertilized or not. Yeah. But... I've been storing last year's down here too. I still have one attached to the vine here that hasn't fallen yet. So that's still hanging there. Eventually that'll just drop down. So that's how it works in nature. They would fall straight down, hit the ground, and if all works out, just keep yeah, growing. keep on growing. So it sets up the vine, the top growth first, and then sets the root. So th this is where I've been storing them, and then I've been bringing them up, cutting them up, and eating them. So You're, we're eating the ones that are actually growing too, right? Yeah. These are the ones that I've, I've been cutting up and that's what we've been cooking. And they're not bitter or anything. They taste good. Because yeah. some plants, if they start to grow, they'll taste bitter. But they've been great. You, that's not just here. You've got here. Look at all these. Oh, my goodness. So, so I didn't need to freeze them. I thought I had to f cut them up and freeze them. But I'm just storing them like this. It works. It's not how the books would tell you how to do it. The same as the fig leaf gourds. Some of these are still hanging up here. Of course, I've got a ton of them 
down here and now I'm putting the smaller ones under here too. So, so that's the f first tunnel I guess. And, and these grapes, because they're getting more sun, you know, they're already leafed out a lot more than the other. What is this? Fennel. Oh, that's fennel, okay. It, it's wild fennel, it's not anything special. Do you use it for anything? I just chew on it when I come down oh, okay. here. I just was wondering why you leave it. The um, fig leaf gourd is flowering. I don't know if the fruit's setting, but there's quite a few little fruits on it, like this one here. So that might drop off. It's already starting to sort of turn brown there, but we can still use that and cook it. So I've got quite a few of those. Wait a minute. Oh, that, that's, well, that's, that's chiote. chiote, boy. See, those ones have set fruit properly. Oh my, oh, you didn't see those? No, I didn't Look see those. That. And that's dark green. That, that is the color that I've been looking for. So far, I've only been producing white ones, but this is the one that I've really been looking for. I, that's a surprise. That's. Hold on, I've got a question. When the other ones grow, they don't look that dark from the no. beginning when they're little? No. You, uh, so you just discovered a whole new, is that the one you just planted or no? That, that I planted that last year and I bought another one this year hoping to try to get that color. Is that the ones the dogs chewed to the ground? Yes. And you didn't know it came back? I had planted a white one and a black one here. This one didn't produce fruit last year. So the fruit I got from last year, which are the white ones, which is this color, that came from one of the vines. I, the, the, the black one or the dark green one didn't fruit. Uh, see how light these ones are? Let me see, because that's interesting. Actually, that one's still kind of green. Still kind of green, but it's not a dark. So they're green. a lighter color. They're a lighter color. They're not yeah. that deep green. Yeah, the healers what chewed it. Yeah, so this they were is playing. a lot lighter color when they start. I don't know if you can really tell the difference, mm. but that is definitely a dark one. Oh wow! So it wasn't a loss. Well, look at that. So now you've got. It yeah, all that, works out. We keep it. You sure it's going to stay dark green? Yeah, because I I recognize oh, what they size. what they look like when they're that size. They are a lot lighter. They're that sort of pale cream color. Oh, cool. Look at that. He discovered something too I we were down here. I pruned my, ap I pruned my apple trees back this year and I got rid of the suckers. So I've cleaned that up a lot. Are you starting dragon fruit in the pool? Yeah, just pieces that are in the way. Just chop them off, stick them in the ground. If they live, fine. If they don't, it doesn't matter that much rather than compost them. Your papayas look good. I'm, I'm gonna lose one, I think. Yeah, this... But they're sheltered. See, these see are this way? These are reasonably show sheltered. Them. See this here? It's sheltered from the wind where mine is not. My asparagus started to come back oh. again. They, they sent spears up two months ago and then stopped when it got cold again. So now they're starting to send more spears up. And the one that I grow is Purple Passion. And even when they're this size, they're sweet all the way down. So I can cut that all the way down and this will be sweet all the way along. It has more sugars and less fiber than the green varieties. And this one here, just I put, oh. put baskets over there so nothing will get them. And this one just curled up. So this one I should just harvest and eat Maybe I'll bring that up tonight for dinner. Yeah, I'll make a stir fry from it. We can even use shark fin melon. <laughs> yeah, we've figured out what to do with that now. The bananas along here have got a little bit of cold damage. Um, they, yeah, they're not going to die. They just don't look as great as they should. The ones that are in a more sheltered area, they're doing a, much, a lot better. I've been clearing along here. I've got more asparagus down the end that produces a thicker stalk. So that's probably a female, uh, probably a male, and these might be females. I've got a lot of seedlings coming up. 
I know some people say, oh, you, you want to get rid of the female so they don't drop seed. Well, these are new plants. I can leave them, I could just pull them out, or I can give them away, move them somewhere else. But I've got a lot of seedlings coming up. These are all seedlings through here. And the reason most people want, well, it's not most people, the reason some people say you want to remove the females is you don't want to get seeds, but that's for commercial growers. For a home gardener, if you produce seeds, you're going to produce more plants. And I haven't seen any effect on production, allowing them to set seed or flower and set seed. Yeah, I've got a few small papayas on here. This is a small variety of papaya. Are these the strawberry? These are the strawberry. And just along here real quick, I planted a couple more sapotes, and not sapotes, chayotes, and I'm training those to get to the frame here. So these are the ones that we saw earlier. I just put the base into the soil, and now these two have set root. So I put two more here. There was one there, but the dogs destroyed that one. The one over here, they destroyed it. I stuck the piece back in the ground, hoping that it would still grow, and it did grow. Last year it didn't produce any fruit, but this year it's just starting to flower again. So I'm hoping this might be a dark green one too, because that's the colour I'm looking for. And then I've got my Bundaberg rum tomatoes. These are a dwarf tomato, and that's the size fruit they produce, and they've been producing all winter long. So I really like these. I'm going to use these because they only grow this high. I can train them up to this height, and the rest of my arbor I can use for other vining plants. And of course, this is sweet potato. I vine my sweet potatoes up. That way, they don't take up as much space. This is trenching again? The trench, I dug this trench to drain water away from my garden. When it rained really heavy, it flooded in there, and by building a raised bed in here, I created a dam and the water had nowhere to flow. So just to clear the water out of the way, it was like six or nine inches of water the other side of the wall, I just dug a trench. I'll set this up a little bit better eventually. Okay, I'll follow you into your garden. Yep. And these are just dragon fruit cuttings that I lopped off, stuck in some soil, and I'm not really fussed about trying to get them to grow. If some set root, that's good. I think they're all gonna set root. They look like they're all gonna set. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Anything new in here? Uh, I'm just working on a new retaining wall. I'm getting that laid out. It's going to be another raised bed. I'm just going to have a long raised bed down there and that's what I've been working on. I cleared most of my tree collards out. Some of them are aging out and they're dying back. So I've transplanted some into the back where my bananas are. Eventually I'll move my bananas from there to an area where the soil's deeper. The tree collards don't need deep soil. They've got reasonably small root systems so they don't need the deep soil. Yeah, I've got that 10 foot one in a little tote and there's no soil in there. It's dying out though. But yeah, they do age out after about four or five years, the tree colored, so it's good to keep doing cuttings. I've got a couple on their way out. More shark fin, melon. Yeah, shark, more shark fin, melon. Some of them I've collected. As I've been clearing this area, I found them. I haven't moved them into where I'm storing them yet. I just got them out of my way. And my... I haven't seen that though. I don't even know when you started this. I started this, slowly started this a few weeks ago. So I've just laid down some pavers and I'm going to put the, I've got a way of setting this up. So I've got the concrete blocks, I'll have those sitting on the pavers and then this will be a fairly narrow raised bed 
and I'll be setting another dragon fruit hedge along here. You could walk across there, but I'm not going to go. If you want to go across and point anything out. Yeah, I'm not sure what's back there. I you... guess there is nothing. I'm just not going to walk across here yeah. with the bricks. I'm not going to hike over yeah, well, it. You, you can I'll walk go around. around. The other way. But you've got all your passion vines. My goodness, how many plants is that again? Two? Three? Two. Yep. The whole thing, the whole wall. The whole thing is two passion fruit vines. And that's been producing fruit, uh, I think, in December when it cooled down a bit. They stayed green, but now they're ripening up again, and it's just super productive. That's purple passion. That's the variety that I've got. So it produces a reasonable size fruit and very prolific. And they have to fall before you eat them, right? That's correct. Can I walk through this? Yeah, way you can walk through okay. here. What I've been doing right now is as I'm I go through every morning, I pull out some of the weeds because they're just basically growing in wood chips. I put them in a bucket and give them to the chickens and the guineas and they break that down and then they produce fertilizer and I bring the bucket back with fertilizer. Yeah, it's got pepinos flowering and pepinos with fruit. So that one just fell off. So I've got some with fruit. These are a little bit green. And I've got more growing along here. They're flowering and setting fruit. Anything else, or are we pretty much? No, that's pretty much it. We can walk through here. We'll just do a walk, and then you can. Yeah, we'll just say do a walk so through. They can see, because I haven't seen either. I haven't hiked down here with all our miserable weather. I got enough work to do above. Like I said, my garden's way up there, and this is this is a hike, yeah. but it's nice. I now, like it. Right now, I'm trying to clear th pathways. The nasturtiums really doing well. It's come back. My bananas here are greener. I know there's a lot of dead leaves on it. I haven't cleared it because I want to leave those when it's cool and remove them when it, well, the weather warms up to let more sun in. I've got a couple of different varieties back here. And you may not be able to see it, but that's my original pond. And it's kind of covered with duckweed and some other aquatic plants right now. Uh, my blueberries are flowering. I've got two blueberries back here. There's still sweet potato growing among here. Is that what that is, sweet potato? Yeah, there's sweet potato growing here. Back here, it tends to die back a little bit more. But yeah, there's sweet potato scattered through here. Where it gets a little more sun, it stays green. Now, of course, I've got my canners everywhere. I really like my canners because the hummingbirds like it. Nice place to pitch a tent and go hike, uh, go camping. <laughs> oh, look at the beans. Yeah, I left some of the scarlet runner beans on the plant this last year. I didn't harvest them, but these can be harvested and replanted or even eaten. So at this stage, they're a shell bean, so you just have to boil them up and treat them like a dry bean. I think this hummingbird with a nest around here, she's zipping around. Yeah, she did have a nest on the other side and she's finished there. And yeah. Sometimes it's almost impossible to see them. Oh my! My, my yacone is starting to come back. That produces a little tuber underground. Quite a few things are starting to grow.
I'm stepping on your new stir. No, that's fine. You okay. can step on it. And then when you have more sweet potato in More here? sweet potato in here. This gets a little more sun, so it's staying alive and it's got new growth on it. I've got society garlic here. I'm going to start breaking this up, putting it around my garden a little more. And that's a good plant for a companion plant to put with other crops. So I'll plant this around my plants that are going to get aphids and that'll repel the aphids. And that's pr pretty much it, I can So. <laughs> Then I guess you could say goodbye. I've gone through mine. Uh, are you building anything in here? Oh, yeah. I've got a lot of projects going. And okay, so you're gonna, this is where you're going to make a greenhouse. Yeah, or this is right? where my greenhouse is going to go. Oh, my goodness. So I started working here, and then this flooded out. So this was in places it was about a foot deep of water. So I thought, I'm going to scrap this job, and that's when I started working on the raised bed. So I moved, whatever time I've got, I've just sort of figured, what do I need to prioritize? So the raised bed is going to be done before my greenhouse. All right, well, this was nice. I kind of did a walkthrough because for me, nothing's really changed. Mine's on the inside starting seeds and stuff and thinking about what I'm going to do. And you've been working away. Well, you're building a raised bed. I'm yeah. not changing anything except for my dog kennel I'm going to start working on. A few other things, too. All right, well... I hope they enjoy this. Look at all the passion fruit. And of course, I've got dragon fruit growing up amongst it, too. So that's, that's a real jungle. Wow. And that's the thing. I, most of what I grow are perennial. So I just wait until they come back. I haven't really planted a lot of new plants yet. I will a little bit later on. OK. So with that, Thank you for watching and don't forget to eat what you grow. <laughs> I think he's got too much time, but that's good. Well, everybody, have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this, and I think in the next two weeks you're going to start seeing major changes because we're not in spring yet. But we have spring in about another week we start spring here. Yeah, that's and yeah. things are starting to show signs of spring. So starting to see seeds coming up in compost bins and that's when there's that's really the, the time to start thinking about things. Too early right now still for watermelon, cucumber here, because we still get too cold at night, they may not make it. But I can start that pretty soon in the house. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And she's barking. She wants me to get up there, which I have to do hummingbirds anyways. They literally are emptying everything out. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Tell me what else you want to see. But we've got a lot more coming because now we are just starting to really get serious. And isn't this beautiful? So with that, have a wonderful day again. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.